And our Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission is asking fintech operators in the country to adhere strictly to regulatory guidelines and partner with regulators in their operations for more global impact. The Commission's Executive Vice Chairman, Mr. Babatunde Irukera, made the call at a meeting with the operators. He said a partnership with regulators and policymakers will help increase the country's investment while disclosing that the country is capturing 40% of $2.7 billion in, in investment. Ms. Irukera said fintech is not just the present, it is the future. Fintech is transactional. It is the greatest instrument of financial inclusion. And now the Central Bank of Nigeria has postponed the September version of its bi-monthly monetary policy committee meeting indefinitely. The APS Bank Director of Corporate Communications, Mr. Issa Abdumomin, announced the postponement in a statement in Abuja. The meeting was earlier scheduled to hold on September 25 and September 26, 2023. The director in the statement said the new date will be communicated in due course. And why financial experts believe that the postponement might not be unconnected with the ongoing probe of the APS Bank under the leadership of its suspended governor, Godwin Emefele. It will be recalled that President Bola Tinubu recently approved the nomination of Mr. Olaye Mikadoso as the new governor of the CBN and nominated four new deputy governors for the APS Bank. Away from there now, the world's second largest stock exchange, the National Association of Securities Dealer Automatic Quotation System, also known as NASDAQ, has acknowledged President Bolatinubu's global push to aggressively attract foreign direct investment into Nigeria and invited him to bring the closing, uh, to ring the closing bell, rather. The U.S. Chamber's bell ringing ceremony with President Tinubu taking place on the sidelines of the 78th section of the UN General Assembly symbolizes the significance of the economic ties between the United States and Nigeria. The past is consistency in place, lack of consistency. Double taxation. Unfriendly exchange rate environment. Corrupt, nauseous exchange rate. Corrupt subsidy. That's where we are labeled perhaps one of the most corrupt cities in Africa. Those two items can make you sad. Also in attendance were successful Nigerian industrialists and public officials who shared their experiences and operational plans with the global investment community in line with the president's push for economic growth. I know that there are issues, but with what is going on, we believe that you know, a lot of the challenges will be over soon. We know we have a lot of uh, you know, a deficit as far as infrastructure, for example, is concerned. And there are a lot of companies that want to come and invest in Nigeria as far as infrastructure is concerned. Nigeria, as I keep saying, is you know, endowed with huge, huge, huge potential and opportunities. So we are here, we are meeting with a lot of investors. Many presidents in the past who come for hunger, but they don't pay this kind of attention to coming to a place like this. This is symbolic. It helps people know that our leader is ready for business. He supports business and will create the enabling environment for business to succeed. There's so much private global capital looking for the right investment destination. And this capital will go to work is most welcome. Seeing the president of Nigeria come to New York, come to NASA to ring the closing bell says a lot. That is a man that is pro-business. We need a pro-business leadership to take Nigeria to the next level. Uh, since President Bola Ahmed Tinubu became president, uh, for people who observe our capital markets, we have seen you know, market performance very strong. Investors have reacted very strongly to the uh, policy changes that he has implemented. So today is really a celebration of some of that. Uh, and also, more importantly, to demonstrate to Mr. President that the capital markets are available to support a lot of his agenda. Everything from how do we drive deeper foreign exchange to how do we improve government revenues to how do we improve employment, for example, 
are all things that we think the capital markets can support uh, on the agenda. And these are some of the things that we're looking to reinforce today.